continuing with privacy and uh, possibly extending from the idea of employee monitoring, and that is the idea of monitoring of email. Um, Once again, uh, you kind of wonder if this is an area that you want to get into, uh, but there there may be uh, a number of reasons. Um, well, I, there are currently a, a number of reasons for doing different types of monitoring of email, uh, such as scanning for viruses and malware. Um, or, well, and spam. Um, and different types of spam, of course, that may uh, be involved with fraud. All of these are quite legitimate reasons to want to do some monitoring of email. Um, but it does start to uh, turn on what is... Uh, you know what? What is the privacy legislation in your jurisdiction, and not just your jurisdiction? Because if you're dealing with email, you're dealing with worldwide uh, possibilities. But you know what uh, kind of privacy concerns do you need to be concerned about? Um, we've talked about employee monitoring. Uh, you know, is is this an area again? You know, if if you are going to do. Uh, monitoring of employees' email, uh, which, you know, maybe for a number of purposes, including um, assessment of uh, compliance with policies in regard to email, in in, uh, compliance with regard to policies in terms of acceptable use, um, a number of of those types of things may uh, be reasons for wanting to uh, do monitoring of email, but, uh, you know, be very careful that you are not running afoul of privacy legislation by doing so. Now, um, in regard to uh, email, um, and, and this may seem a bit strange because I'm going to talk about the United States and the... Uh, situation of email in the United States, and of course, you know, well, it's very likely that most of you who are looking at this, listening to this, are uh, from the United States, um, there are a number who aren't. But uh, this particular topic does raise a number of points that are applicable Worldwide, not necessarily in terms of the individual uh, legislation, technologies, legal system, those types of things, but in terms of how far can this extend, and and what uh, far-reaching legal impacts can a seemingly simple uh, situation have. So, if we are looking at uh, the United States and uh, email, um, when uh, the United States Constitution and an awful lot of the legislation uh, was laid down, the you know email did not exist. Uh, what we had was mail and, oh, <clears throat> of course, the telephone. But when we're considering how to apply the laws in, in regard to communications, is email a telephone call? Because, uh, well, you know, basically an awful lot of uh, connections in, uh, on the Internet, network connections, are seen as, you know, a connected session, um, even though we are uh, perhaps sending a pre-prepared message, it's still, we establish a connection, we have a connection, uh, we send the information, um, 
we may have some back and forth handshaking and you know then we terminate the the connection the call so you know it's very much like a telephone situation so the does law in regard to telephone calls apply to email or is email like mail like the postal mail snail mail uh in that we have uh you know an envelope which has the address uh the address we want it to get to the destination the originating address uh very often um and so on and so forth uh and and we have the the body of the message itself now um in the united states uh it's fairly easy uh i you know you, you have to have a reason but basically it's it's not an arduous task to get a warrant to uh listen in monitor a phone call to get a phone tap uh wiretap um and you know it, it's kind of you know not it's a bit pushing it but you know it's it's sort of like you uh go provide your reason put a 25 cent piece in the slot and uh you know out comes the warrant type of thing um but it's really difficult uh, possibly because the post office was invented by the the American post office anyways was invented by the venerated uh, Saint Benjamin Franklin uh, and the the post office is a very very important institution in the United States it's very very protected and it's almost impossible to get a warrant to look at people's mail so again when it comes to email it's important to know does the united states consider the uh email uh a phone call or uh, you know in, if it's a phone call it's not too hard to get a wiretap to look at somebody's email if you we consider it a mail then yeah it's really difficult to get permission to look at somebody's email and as i said before it's not uh, uh the united states does not have a legal system the united states has all kinds of legal systems and individual states have made defi- decisions in their supreme courts uh maintaining in in different states that email is akin to a phone call or that email is akin to mail and in the case you know where the state says it's like a phone call then it's relatively easy to tap it in the states where it says that it's uh mail then the state says no you can't look at it unless you've got a really really good reason and and go through all kinds of legal loopholes to to get permission to do that so the uh and and this is happening in different states now if you are sending an email message just within the united states you know we're not even talking about international jurisdictions here but just within the united states um if we're sending a message from new york to los angeles we're going to pass through about 14 different states and can you tell me whether you know in which of those states is this email message going to be considered a phone call and in which is it going to be considered a letter and therefore it comes to the point where when we are dealing with um uh, uh encryption of email in some states because the united states has laws saying you cannot put any technology into place that make it difficult for someone to uh for for the the law enforcement authorities to tap a phone call so you know in in those states 
that have decided emails a phone call, it's actually forbidden to encrypt email. Whereas in other states that uh, say that an email message is a letter, it is mandatory to encrypt the email just in case somebody else might try to get at that. You need to protect it. So, you know, which way do we do it? That's how complicated this situation can get with one simple example of technology.